there's Tom George and Ollie Ingrid there. And they're Cambridge Blue, both national team members, both took a year out of the national team this year to go and race Cambridge. and study at Cambridge. Wairiki. When I see that you're both straight and ready, I will start you like this. Attention. Go. I'd like to just Get ready, please. McDonald and McIntosh from New Zealand in the black. All you Griffin's Tom George in the silver goblets on the top of your screen. As we said in the previous race, it's usually the cocks and the cocks boat who have their hand up saying they're not straight. Here it's the bad person. start would expect that these are two of the very fastest pairs in the entire world and the oh. Kiwi pair as I say that have veered slightly across to Berkshire they'll be getting warned to move back please back to your booking station that slightly pushed the Cambridge pair over as well it's always a really deceptive because they actually the, the although the line is really straight on the course they actually the land moves away from you so it's very common for crews to start moving towards where the land's taking you like you said, these are two of the best pairs in the world. They've, between them, one's won the first World Cup, the other's won the second World Cup, and this is very exciting, and what a privilege for us to watch them come together to see who might take the title today. Exactly, Catherine. This is an absolute spectacle you're watching right now. Two of the fastest pairs in the world from either end of the world, and they're here on this Henley course, going to battle it out, this gladiatorial stretch of water, and the Cambridge pair have taken the lead. Ollie Winkers, Tom George have slipped half a length on this much favoured, very fast New Zealand pair. Yeah, that's going to be slightly uncomfortable for that New Zealand pair. It, you know, I don't think anyone was expecting a move, especially so close to the start, suddenly to be able to move out half a length. And both pairs, you can see both pairs still very high rate, still very much, you know, driving out that start, still at very intense level. They haven't settled yet. And even within that intensity, the Cambridge pair has moved out on them by about half a length. It's a very impressive start. This New Zealand pair are not bad at rowing either. Both of them got an Olympic gold medal each in the men's A in Tokyo. Not bad at all, really. Yeah, not too bad. So these two pairs you're looking at here raced each other in the men's eight. With the left-hand side of your screen in, in the black, the New Zealand combo. They won the gold, and Tom and Ollie on the right of your screen, the Cambridge Blue bronze. A little bit of a grudge match here. I know, we do love a grudge match. Um, but yeah, as you said, both both medalists, um, all medalists in, in men's eight. So interesting, they've both been selected currently in the pairs. Um, it's a long season, we've mentioned this before, the World Championships for the international crews are, are very late this season, they won't be till September. Um, so there's a long of season yet, so it'll be interesting where these, these gentlemen end up, in which boats later on as we get down the season. And I think we're looking here at the future of world rowing. These, these pairs are both very young. They've both all been to the Olympics and I imagine quite a few more Olympic games in them both. And I would love to see this battle carrying on because the Kiwi pair has stuck with Cambridge. They've not let them go. They're, they're very physical. They're very strong. And they're going to have that confidence of an Olympic gold medal around their neck. Yeah, and, and although, as we said, they've, they've won their sort of big title in the men's eight, New Zealand have got an incredible history in men's pairs rowing as well. I mean, very like Britain as well, between the two countries, they've really had some outstanding athletes in the past. So, again, through their coaching, through their setup, they're very confident in these smaller boats taking on the rest of the world. The very successful New Zealand pair, Bond and Murray, two time Olympic champion. Are we seeing the next New Zealand pair right now? Mac McDonald in the bow seat, Tom McIntosh in the stroke seat. A little look across, he's going to say we're still there. They've certainly got the power to stick with them, but lovely, loose, long stroke that we see from a lot of the Cambridge crews, Captain. Yeah, they have a really impressive setup. Um, Rob Baker is the coach over at, at Cambridge University for the Blue Boats. Just, you know, very good technician, sets up a really nice, relaxed, long style. We're not seeing the, the end of the blades at the moment, but really sort of clean, technical style of racing as well. And I think, you know, for both Oliver and Griffith there, we see in the bow seat, Tom George in the stroke, just lovely rhythm, very confident. I think, you know, this this kind of imposing that rhythm and imposing that success on the on New Zealand pair would have been, will be very pleasing for them at this point in the race. And they've not let them get away. This is like a six 
lane race where really it is neck and neck most of the way down the course. These crews are used to that. You see anyone not getting flustered from being down is going to be these professional athletes you're seeing right now. And the Kiwis look like they've just taken their strike, their strike of rating up and they are moving back on the Cambridge pair. Yeah, it does it that they've made us move. And, and it's always the interesting bit when you get a start like that Cambridge pair got, you know, can you hold on to it? But the, the Kiwis, as we, we expect them to be very strong in this race, but they have done a move that you don't often see in the middle of the course. It's still, you know, still a long way to go, but they've lifted the rate a, a bit like we saw with the Oxford Brooks crew in the race before. They've sort of done this move that mentally will be will do some real damage to that Cambridge pair. It's really going to be on them how they respond, because once you've got a lead, you want to consolidate that lead and get comfortable, and suddenly you've got this New Zealand pair powering up next to you and alongside you, and it's going to be what both crews can do next. And what a move! They were a diesel engine getting starting out those blocks and they have just fired themselves up because they are taken a half a length out of this Cambridge prayer and they're right back on track. As we come down here, we're approaching the Forley. This is through the middle of the race. Have they got it? Yes, I think they're just about all ahead as we come down towards the enclosures. Yeah, that was a really, really impressive move from that New Zealand pair. I mean, again, like we said, experienced on the international scene. Um, less so in the small boat, to be fair, than the, than the eight, but they've already won a World Cup in this. And they will know they've got a reputation and, and a, an ability to match that as well. We talked about this before. People do want to come to Henley Royal Regatta and win the title. It's a big name to add to your list of accomplishments. And to take on the sort of the British pair on the British course is something that a lot of international crews really enjoy taking on that challenge. You see the bow shot there, the New Zealand pair, all black colour, and they have absolutely ripped it through the Cambridge pair. Brilliant start by both boats, but that killer blow is so hard to do through the middle of a race. Really opened up this lead, but great shots there. Oliver Ingrid's bow seat, Still looking calm and relaxed, can they respond? Because you can move in these smaller boats. You can. What I was impressed with, when you looked at it from the bow end of the boat, the, the New Zealand pair is running very, very smooth. There's very little lift and drop to that bow ball, whereas the Cambridge boat were bouncing a bit more. So that New Zealand pair is going to have a much more efficient stroke as they come into these last few, but last few metres. Here they come. They're coming down towards the finish line. A little across from Tom George in the stroke seat. Take the rate up, Tom. What have you got left? But it's not going to be enough as the New Zealand pair, the Wairiki Rowing Club, cross the line to take the famous Silver Goblet and Nichols Challenge Cup. What a race. Matt, talk us through the race. How close was that? Yeah, that was a really close race. We thought it was going to be like that. Um, they did a hell of a good job out of the start, really put some pressure on us and yeah, that was, a, that was a real test today. So really enjoyed that and they did a really good job and we look forward to racing them again next weekend. So yeah, it was, it was very tight and really enjoyed it. How does this event compare to the, the, the rest of the summer? Why is this one so important for you guys? Oh, I guess for me personally, I've got pretty much my whole family here. So that's something I've never really experienced at a regatta overseas. So that's extremely uh, exhilarating for me. I guess the atmosphere is something that we come here for, yeah. and the water conditions are always something testing. So there's a lot of boat wash, wake, wind, uh, and ducks. So yeah, just getting used to that and testing yourselves and trying to be the best that you can every day.